So this is section 5.5, which is really just a continuation of section 5.4. In section 5.4, we learned how to find different features uh, in the graph of a fraction. And in section 5.5, we're going to refine all those features, and then we're going to actually sketch a graph of the fraction uh, displaying those features. And quite honestly, um, the only thing that's new to this section we're going to use our calculator for. To sketch a graph with any, any accuracy, um, you need a bit of calculus. And since we're not doing calculus, we're just going to use our calculator to get the accuracy part. So let me just kind of jump into problem two. Problem two gives me a fraction and then asks me to find a few features of the graph of that fraction and just some generic features in general. So for 2a, I'm asked to find the domain of the fraction f of x equals 4x minus 12 over 2x plus 2. And remember, when we find the domain of a fraction, we ignore the numerator, and we solve the denominator equal to 0. When I solve this fraction, its denominator equal to 0, I need to do two steps. I'm going to minus 2 from both sides, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and that will give me x equal to negative 1. x equal to negative 1, the algebra for finding the domain of a fraction, gives you the vertical asymptote, but it doesn't give you the domain. For the answer for the domain of number 2, I'm going to say the domain of the fraction f of x equals to 4 x minus 12 over 2x plus 2 is all real numbers except, and the algebra came up with negative 1, so I'm going to say except negative 1. For the vertical asymptote part of number 2, it's just going to be x equal to negative 1. It comes right up in the algebra for the domain. There's no, any, there's no extra algebra to do. Now I'm going to show that feature on my graph. I've put a, uh, a graph down on my um, problem 2. When you go to do your problem 1, you're, well, I'm going to, you're going to want to make your x's go between really negative 30 and 30 and y's go between negative 10 and 10. That really surprises me. Um, let me just check that out real quickly before I get too far into this to make sure that window makes sense for yours. I can't, it's kind of shocking to me right now that that would be a window that I'd want for yours. I'm going to do number 10 real, number 1 quickly with a zoom standard and see what the graph looks like. Oh, I can see, I don't see much of the graph over here. So when you go to do your problem 1, you want to use x min of negative 30, x max of 30, y min of negative 10, y max of 10, so that when you graph it, you can see all the features of the graph. So for each of your problems, I'm going to tell you the window to use. For each of my problems, the window is going to be kind of implied. My x min is supposed to be negative 10, my x max is supposed to be 10, my y min negative 10, or my y max 10. I haven't got to the graphing graphing part just yet, but that just kind of surprised me. So I'm going to show the vertical asymptote real quickly by putting a dashed line through negative 1 on the x-axis. And it has to be a vertical line. So this is my vertical asymptote of x equal negative 1. For part B, part C is a horizontal asymptote. And to do a horizontal asymptote, I look at the highest x power term in the numerator and the highest x power term in denominator. The highest x power term in the numerator is a 4x to the first. The highest x power term in the denominator is a 2x to the first. When their highest exponent term in the numerator equals the highest exponent term in the denominator, you divide the coefficients to get the horizontal asymptote. So the horizontal asymptote for problem 2 is going to be y equals 2. And I'm going to divide the coefficients of 4 and 2 here, and that's going to simplify to y equal to 2. So my answer to part B of number, part C of number 2, is a horizontal asymptote has the equation of y equal to 2. And I'm going to show that on my graph by finding 2 on the y-axis and drawing a dashed horizontal line through 2 on the y-axis. So here's my horizontal asymptote of y equal to 2. 
For part D, I need to find the x-intercepts. X-intercepts are reasonably easy to find. The easiest way to find the x-intercept is to set the numerator equal to zero, and that's what I'm going to do. So for part D, I could set the whole fraction equal to zero by going 4x minus 12 over 2x plus 2 equal to zero. Or if you want, you could just set the numerator equal to zero. Both strategies will give me my x-intercept the same way. If I do it this way, I have to write this as 4x minus 12 over 2x plus 2. I have to write it equal to 0 over 1. And then I have to cross multiply. I'm going to cross multiply down and get 1 times 4x minus 12. Cross multiply up and get 0 times 2x plus 2. And that's going to give me 4x minus 12 equals to 0, which is exactly what I've gotten if I would have just set the numerator equal to 0. It's a heck of a lot quicker to set the numerator equal to 0, and you get the same answer. So when I go to find the x-intercepts of my fractions, what I should do is just set the numerator equal to 0 and ignore the, the denominator. For this problem, the algebra, regardless of which algebra I go, go through completely with, is going to give me x equal to 3 for the x-intercept. When I go to write my answer for the x-intercept, the opposite letter is always 0. The opposite of x is y. My x-intercept is going to be the point 3, 0. I'm going to write that on my front sheet and put that point on my graph. So my x-intercept is going to be the point 3, 0. And I'm going to graph it. I'm going to make a dot at the point 3, 0. I could write 3, 0 there, but it's going to make my graph kind of messy if I do it. So I'm just going to make a dot for the x-intercept. The last algebra I need to do is find the y-intercept, and that's real easy to do. For part e of number, for part e of 2, I'm just going to find out what f of 0 is by plugging in 0 for the x's. I'm going to go 4 times 0 minus 12 over 2 times 0 plus 2. The pieces with the 0 cancel, and you get f of 0 equals to negative 12 over 2 which is negative 6. That's the y part of the y-intercept. When I go to write the answer, the y part of the y-intercept is negative 6. The other letter, which in this case is, zero, is x, is always 0. I'm going to plot that point 0, negative 6 on my y-axis. And the rest of what I'm going to do is sketching a graph. All I'm going to do is now set the window that's implied by the graph, or set the window that I tell you, and enter this function and graph it, and make sure that the graph follows the features, meaning make sure that it goes through the x and the y intercepts, make sure that it's drawn to the asymptotes the same way um, that your calculator does. So when I go to graph number 2, I'm just going to enter the function y equals parentheses 4x minus 12 divided by parentheses 2x plus 2. My window is a standard window, so I'm just going to do zoom standard. And it's going to sketch a graph. The thing that's going to be important, oh, let, me, let me draw the asymptotes in too, real quickly. To get the asymptote at x equal to negative 1, I have to take um, a thousand times the denominator to do that. So if I go y equals and go a thousand times the denominator, because so setting that denominator equal to 0 gave me a, um, the vertical asymptote at negative 1. Doing that now is going to add the vertical asymptote to the graph. To put the horizontal asymptote on the graph, I'll hit y equals and just go down to number 3 and type y equal to 2. Now it's going to throw the horizontal asymptote. Now I'm going to sketch a graph. This upper left-hand quadrant of the graph doesn't have any points to go through, so I'm just going to draw something that looks like this that's just above the horizontal asymptote, that's just to the left of the vertical asymptote. So in this corner, I'm going to write something that looks like that. I'm going to put little arrows to mean it keeps going up and over. And in the right-hand corner of this, the graph has to go through the x-intercept, and it gets close to that horizontal asymptote. It has to go through the y-intercept, and it crosses the y-axis, and it's going to get close to the vertical asymptote. So I just kind of borrowed the best I could from my calculator. My calculator shows me that the graph crosses the y-axis at the y-intercept, and it starts slowly getting close to that vertical asymptote. So this would be a reasonable picture, the best I can do just by copying from what my calculator gave me. 
That should motivate you, hopefully, to do problem one. I'll move on and work my way to problem four. My window for problem four is going to be x min negative 5, x max 5, y min negative 18, y max 18, whereas this is your window for problem three. So let me do number four. First thing I want to do is find the domain. To find the domain for number four, which is going to be 4a, I ignore the numerator and I set the denominator equal to zero. To find the domain of any fraction, we set the denominator equal to zero. And in this case, there's some factoring to do. Once I get the denominator factored, I'm going to set each of the factors equal to zero and get x equal to negative one and x equal to one. For my domain, I can say the domain of the fraction f of x equals 9x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 1 is all real numbers except plus or minus 1, or I can write 1 in negative 1. When I go to do part b, the work for the vertical asymptote for the domain gives me the actual equations of the vertical asymptotes. My answer to part b, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 1 and a vertical asymptote at x equal to 1. If I want to graph these on my calculator in y2 to get this vertical asymptote, I'm going to enter 1,000 times x plus 1 to get the vertical asymptote at x equal negative 1. To get that vertical asymptote in y3, I'm going to enter 1,000 times x minus 1. Let me get those in so I can have my vertical asymptotes drawn real quickly without even graphing the function yet. So let me y equals clear out all the stuff that's in there. In y2, put 1,000 times x plus 1, which is going to be a vertical line that goes through negative 1. And in y3, put 1,000 times x minus 1 which is going to be a vertical asymptote through 1. When I hit graph, I'm not going to see the fraction graph. There's my vertical asymptote at negative 1. There's my vertical asymptote at 1 already drawn in. Done with 4a and 4b. Have those on my graph on my calculator. Now my by hand graph, I'm going to draw a dashed line through negative 1 on the x-axis and a dashed vertical line through positive 1 on the x-axis. So here's my vertical asymptote at x equal negative 1. And here's my vertical asymptote at x equal 1. Horizontal asymptotes are easy for me. So to do part C, for the horizontal asymptote, I look at the highest exponent term in the numerator and the highest exponent term in the denominator. The highest exponent term in the numerator is the 9x squared. The highest exponent term in the denominator is 1x squared. When there's a tie between the highest exponents, the horizontal asymptote has the equation um, that you get by you dividing the coefficients of the highest exponent terms. For me, my horizontal asymptote is going to have an equation of y equal to 9. So for my horizontal asymptote, it's going to be y equal to 9. To graph this on my graph, I'm going to find 9 on the y-axis, which I had to estimate, and I'm going to draw a horizontal line through it. So I get a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 9, on my calculator, I'm going to hit my y equals. I'm going to go all the way down to y4. I'm going to type the number 9 and hit enter. And now my calculator is going to draw that line through 9. I haven't changed my window yet, so it looks like it's extremely at the top of the window, but I'll fix that in a bit when I do a little bit more graphing. So done with domain, vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote. For the x-intercepts, the easiest way to find the x-intercept is just to set the numerator equal to 0 and to ignore the denominator. When I go to do part 4d, the easiest way to find the x-intercept is just to set the numerator equal to 0. So I'm going to get 9x squared minus 4 equal to 0. I'm going to factor this into 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2 equal to 0. Then I'll go 3x plus 2 equal to 0, 3x minus 2 equal to 0. This one I'll minus 2 from both sides and get 3x equal to minus 2. Then I'll divide both sides by 3 and get x equal minus 2 thirds. 
This one I'll add 2 to both sides and get 3x equal to 2, and then divide both sides by 3 and get x equal to 2 thirds. I'm going to write these as points, and always the opposite letter is 0, so the opposite letter of x is y, so the y is going to be 0. My answer to 4d is going to be able to have those two x-intercepts of negative 2 thirds and positive 2 thirds, 0. So my x-intercepts are going to be negative 2 thirds, comma, 0, positive 2 thirds, comma, 0. I'm going to try to estimate those. 2 thirds is just a little bit to the left of the 1 and a little bit to the right of the negative one. So I'm just making dots for the negative and positive 2 thirds, not writing the point because that point gets really ugly if I start writing it down. For 4e, the last algebra I need to do is find the y-intercepts. And you find the y-intercepts by plugging in 0 for x. So I'm going to go 9 times 0 squared minus 4 over 0 squared minus 1. These pieces with a 0 cancel out and become zeros. And that's going to leave me with negative 4 over negative 1, which is positive 4. That's the y part of the y-intercept. The opposite letter is always 0. The opposite letter of y is x, so the x is going to be 0. The y-intercept I'm going to plot on the y-axis. That's the point 0, 4. That's everything I can do by hand. I'm going to enter this function in my y1, just this part of the function. I'm going to change my window to almost your window, except my y min and y max are going to be the 18s. And then I'll borrow the graph. So let me get this function in. So y1 equals parentheses 9x squared minus 4 divided by x squared minus 1. Have the function in, make my window negative 5 to 5 on the x's because that's what's marked on my axes, and negative 18 to 18 on the y's because that's what's marked on my y-axis. I'm going to hit a graph, and I'm going to copy everything the best I can. So my calculator draws the graphs, and it draws the asymptotes in for me. So in this upper right-hand corner, I'm going to enter this little swish here. So I'm just going to enter this. I've got no points to go through, so I'm just kind of loosely drawing that. In the middle, I have this parabola, and that parabola needs to go through the x and the y intercepts. So I'm going to just draw this parabola just like it looks on my calculator, or as close as I can make it look on my calculator for the middle section. And then the upper section, I don't have any points to go through, but it's just, again, kind of this swish stays above the a taste to the right of the vertical asymptote. It stays above the horizontal asymptote. So that seems like a reasonable graph. If I look at my calculator's graph and what I sketched by hand, that's as close as I'm ever going to get a graph, so that's about as good as it gets, and I'll just stop it right there. You can give number three a go, and I'll move on to do number six. So for number six, part A, I'm going to find the domain. To find the domain of any fraction, you take the denominator equal to zero. And for this one, I'm going to solve for x by dividing both sides by 3. On the left side, the 3's cancel, I get an x. On the right side, I get a fraction with a 0 in the numerator. So that simplifies to 0. I'm going to say the domain of the fraction f of x equals 4 over 3x is all real numbers except x equal to 0. The vertical asymptote always comes from the algebra from the domain, so my vertical asymptote is going to be x equal to 0. And x equal to 0 is really unfortunate because x equal, any equation that just has an x as a vertical line, and x equals 0 actually goes through the y-axis. So this equation, x equals 0, is actually the y-axis. And I can't really graph that on my calculator because my calculator already draws the y-axis, I won't see anything. So I'm not going to enter this as a separate function because the y-axis is already going to be drawn for me. To do the horizontal asymptote for 6c, I probably can think of this problem, instead of thinking it as, of it as 4 over 3x, I can think of it as 4x to the 0 over 3x to the 1, because 4x to the 0 is 4 times 1, because x to the 0 is 1. And the bigger exponent is in the denominator. And when the bigger exponent is in the denominator, there's no algebra to do. 
the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote, which has an equation of y equal to 0. And that's what the top of this says. If the exponent and the exponent, if the exponent in the numerator is less than the highest exponent in the denominator, you get y equal to 0 or the x-axis for your horizontal asymptote. So there's no algebra to do for the horizontal asymptote. The equation is going to be y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. And this is another thing that I'm probably not going to graph on my calculator because my calculator is going to draw the x-axis already. So my initial bit of graphing was the vertical asymptote at x equals 0. My second bit of graphing is my horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. Now I'm going to move on to 6d and find the x-intercepts. The easiest way to find an x-intercept of a fraction is to take the numerator and set it equal to 0. Here there's no x. Because there's no x and I have a false statement, there's no solution to this because I can't isolate an x. If there's no solution to that problem. That means there's no x-intercept. For part 6e, when I go to find the y-intercept, I go f of 0 equals 4 over 3 times 0, which is going to be 4 over 0. And any fraction with a 0 in the denominator is undefined. Because I got undefined when I try to get the y-intercept, there's also no y-intercept. So there's not a lot to plot here. I don't need to do separate graphs for the vertical or horizontal asymptote because they're on the axis, which were already drawn. And there aren't any x or y-intercepts, so there's none of those to plot. So when I go to graph this, I'm just going to make my window go from negative 5 to 5 on the x's, negative 3 to 3 on the y's. I'm going to enter this function, and I'm going to copy it the best I can. So y equals, I'm going to clear out anything that I already have in there, because they're not going to do me any good. I'm going to enter 4 divided by, and I better put the entire denominator in a parentheses. And I'm going to set my window for x min negative 5, x max 5, y min negative 3, y max 3. I'm going to hit my graph and I'm just going to draw the portions. The bottom left hand portion looks something like this, gets drawn to the asymptotes. And the upper right hand portion looks like this, it gets drawn to the asymptotes. So I'm not doing anything particularly um, algebraic or mathematical. I'm just copying the graph the best I can, making sure it gets drawn to the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes that I've drawn in. So this is the best I can do for number six. There weren't any intercepts to plot. I darkened out the axes and told, me, told you that they were the um, asymptotes as well. All right, so give number five a go. We'll move on to do seven and eight, and I'll get a video break in between this. A bit more algebra for number seven. So to do the domain for number seven or eight, let me just, can I do number seven for you? I'll do number eight. So for number eight, part A, when I go to find the domain, I ignore the numerator of x minus one, and I solve the denominator equal to zero, I'm going to solve this by factoring. That factors into x plus 6 times x minus 2. I'll set the x plus 6 equal to 0 and the x minus 2 equal to 0. That will give me x equal to negative 6 and x equal to 2. So I'm going to be lazy because I don't know how much of this I can fit in here. I'm going to say the domain is all real numbers. except negative 6 and 2. I could have said the domain of f of x equals to x minus 1 over x squared plus 4x minus 12 is that, but I got lazy and didn't include the function, and that's completely okay to do. We don't have to every time write the function in that answer. The algebra gives me the vertical asymptotes. There's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 6 and a vertical asymptote at x equal to 2. To get these on my calculator, in y2, I'm going to draw 1,000 times x plus 6. And in y3, I'm going to enter 1,000 times x minus 2. Those are the factors that produce those vertical asymptotes. Let me get these on my calculator really quickly. So clear out. So 1,000 times x plus 6. I'll worry about the windows in a bit. 
and a thousand times x minus two. When I hit graph, I'm going to get vertical lines that go through six, and I'm not going to see that vertical line because my window's no good. Let me tweak my window to go from negative ten to ten on the x's, like I suggested, and negative three to three on the y's. Now I'll see my vertical asymptote at negative six and my vertical asymptote at 2. So my vertical asymptotes are on my calculator, not on my paper. Let me get them on my paper real quickly by going through negative 6 on the x-axis and drawing a vertical line, and going through positive 2 on the x-axis and drawing a dashed vertical line. So this is my vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 6, and my vertical asymptote at x equal to 2. For part C, to move on to my horizontal asymptote, I look at the highest power term in the numerator compared to the highest power term in the, the denominator. The highest power term in the numerator is an x to the first. The highest power term in the denominator is an x squared. When the highest exponent in the numerator is less than the highest exponent in the denominator, the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote, which has an equation of y equal to zero. There's no algebra. This is just a fact I need to know. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equal to zero. That's the x-axis. So I don't really need to draw that on my calculator because my calculator is going to draw the x-axis already. But by hand, I can emphasize that this is my horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero. To do part D, the x-intercepts, it's enough just to set the numerator equal to zero. So I'll go x minus one equal to zero. I'll get x equal to one. The x-intercept is going to be the point 1, 0, and my x-intercept is going to be right on a horizontal asymptote. That's okay. Graphs, graphs can cross horizontal asymptotes kind of by the origin. They can never cross a vertical asymptote. The horizontal asymptote only impacts the graph to the far left and the far right edge. It doesn't impact the graph by the uh, origin. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to plug 0 in for all these x's, so I'm going to go f of 0 equals 0 minus 1 over 0 squared plus 4 times 0 minus 12. All the pieces with 0 disappear, and I'm left with minus 1 over minus 12, and that simplifies to positive 1 twelfth. That's the y part of the y-intercept. The opposite letter x is going to be 0, so the y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 1 twelfth, and that's just hovering right above the origin. It's just slightly above the origin um, on the y-axis. Now I'm going to sketch a graph. I have everything labeled from my parts 8 through E. I didn't do the domain that showed up as a vertical asymptote. And now I'm going to graph this function with the window that I picked. So in my y1, I'm going to go x minus 1 in parentheses divided by x squared plus 4x minus 12 in parentheses. When I hit graph, it's going to give me pieces. The bottom left piece, I'm going to make look like it does, like this. The middle piece is a little squiggle. It goes through the y-intercept, it goes through the x-intercept, and it gets down really close to this vertical line. It doesn't cross it, the vertical line at all. So I'm going to just draw this so it looks to me like it starts up here, goes through the y-intercept, goes through the x-intercept, then it gets really close to that vertical asymptote. And in the upper right-hand corner, I get something that's really close to the vertical asymptote and really close to the horizontal asymptote. My graphs aren't going to ever cross vertical asymptotes, and if they cross a horizontal asymptote, it's going to be close to the origin. Once we get out far enough from the um, origin, the graph is just going to stabilize and not jump the horizontal asymptotes. So that's a reasonable graph. It looks enough like what my calculator gave me that I feel okay about it. All right, so give seven a go. Nine's kind of messy, and I'm going to do nine for you. Messy on a lot of fronts. Messy on... So there's got to be a hiccup in the video here. I'm um, inserting fixes for a few problems, and um, your problem nine and my problem ten fit together nicely um, because... Uh, well, they look kind of structurally the same, but the big deal is the highest exponent in the numerator for both problems 9 and 10 is x equal to 2. The highest exponent that's implied in the denominator next to that x in the denominator is 1. And both problems 9 and 10 and 11 and 12 when we get to them 
are going to have slant asymptotes because when the highest exponent in the numerator is bigger than the highest exponent in the denominator, you get a slant asymptote. And when they're only one apart, you get a line for the slant asymptote. So I'm going to do 10. Uh, I no longer have a nice graph that, I'm, that on the bottom of the sheet, I'm just going to wing it a little bit here. But I figured out what my window should be. If you want to work along with problem 9, that's the window you should have for problem 9. I'm going to go ahead and just work through number 10 and maybe try to squeeze a graph together with my work. I don't know how well that's going to work, um, but good enough. So when I go to do number 10, like all the problems I've done so far, when I go to find the domain, I just set the numerator equal to zero, denominator equal to zero and solve for x. This is really nice because that's just one step to do. The algebra for finding the domain of a fraction gives me the answer to the vertical asymptote, but it doesn't quite give me something that's acceptable for the domain. This was a test question and you stopped here. It was like a three point problem. I'd at least take one off, I'd probably take two. So let me just write the domain nicely. I'm gonna write it in words because that's what I've been doing, but there are other ways to write it. I must just say the domain is all numbers or all real numbers except that negative one. I can say except negative one or except x equal to negative one. I'll just be as lazy as I can be. But the vertical asymptote, that is x equal to negative one. So when I go to sketch a graph, here's negative one on the x-axis, and the vertical asymptote is just gonna show up as a dashed vertical line through negative one on the x-axis more or less vertical. That's my vertical asymptote of x equal to negative 1. This problem has a slant asymptote and I'm going to get the slant asymptote by doing synthetic division. I'm going to take the 1 in the denominator and change its sign. Make my make it a negative 1. Make the 1 in the denominator and change its sign. Make my horizontal bar and then take the coefficients from the numerator. The 1 that's implied in front of the x squared. The 6 that's in front of the x. The negative 7, that's the constant. I'm going to bring down the 1 and I'm going to multiply. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Numbers have the same signs. You add opposite signs, you subtract. Opposite signs here, I subtract. 6 minus 1 is 5 and then negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Numbers have the same signs, so I add. Now I start adding in my variables. I take the 1 and put an x to it with 1 power lower than the numerator. The numerator had an x squared, so I get an x to the first. I need a sign here since it's not a minus between them already. I'll put a plus sign. I don't get an x with the 5 because I already have the x to the first power term after the x to the first power term becomes a constant and then I get the remainder. The slant asymptote just is the stuff before the remainder so the slant asymptote is going to have the equation y equal to x plus 5. And let me try to graph that. That's not so fun to graph. What I'm going to do to graph this, I'm going to plot the point 0, 0,5 and then I'm going to go use the slope and the slope is 1. The number in front of the x is 1 and the slope is going to help me figure out how, how to do the rest of the graph and if I think of the slope as a fraction I can go up 1 and right 1 to get to another point on the graph I haven't marked up my y-axis yet, and this is going to be kind of disgusting to graph. Um, so I might have to improvise a little bit on the graphing this horizontal uh, slant asymptote. On my y-axis, I said to go between negative 25 and positive 25, so I'm going to increment by fives. Oh uh, gosh, maybe I'll just go like this: five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25 and negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and negative 25. It's going to be a disaster for me to go plot the point 0, 0,5, which is right here, and then go up one, right one with any sort of accuracy. 
Um, going up one is not that easy for me to do. So although I'd like to go up one, right one to graph this slant asymptote, I don't really, I can't estimate up one and the right one is over here somewhere. So instead of going up one, right one, I'm just going to get another point on this graph and it's going to be an easy point for me to graph. Um, I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to get a second point. So I'm kind of in, in some sense making a table. I'm going to plug in zero for X and when you plug in zero for X, you get Y equals one times zero plus five, or just y equal to five. And then I'm going to plug another number that's going to give me a y that's easy to plot. Since my y's are multiples of five, and if I plug a multiple of five in for x, I'll get a five for my y. This is a disaster. Um, I'm going to plug in five for y. The reason I'm plugging in 5 for y is because I want an easier point to plot. So I'm going to go y equals 1 times 5 plus 5. That's going to be 5 plus 5, which is 10. So I'm going to plot the point 0, 5, and 5, 10 for my slant asymptote. Um, I don't know how well I'm doing right now. This was my vertical asymptote. This is my slant asymptote. And I'm going to plot the point 0, 5, and 5, 10 and draw my slant asymptote. So 0, 5, 5, 10. And best I can, I'm just going to draw a dashed line that goes through those two points. And that's going to be my slant asymptote that has the equation y equal to x plus 5. Yuck, sorry about that clumsiness. Next, I need to find the x-intercepts. And to find the x-intercepts of a fraction, the easiest thing to do is just set the numerator equal to 0. This number, when I set it equal to 0, it has a square, so I should probably factor. Um, I know that the firsts, when I go to factor, have to be x's. There's not a number in front of the x squared, so I don't need any fancy bottoms up or any other sort of factoring. The last have to multiply to technically negative 7 and subtract to 6. And that's going to be 7 minus 1, because 7 times 1, negative 1 is negative 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. Once I get this factored, I set the inside of the factors equal to 0, the parentheses that contain the factors, and I isolate the x's. I'm going to minus 7 and add 1. And for my x-intercepts, I'm going to write these numbers down, but as points, so I can plot them. I'm going to write the point negative 7, 0 and positive 1, 0. Put those on my graph of negative 7, 0. I'm going to put this in black just so it doesn't sh that shows up. And positive 1, 0. <laughs> Almost ready to plot my calculator. I'm a little bit afraid of what I'm going to see. For the y-intercepts, I just plug zeros for in for all the x's. So I'm going to go f of 0 equals 0 squared plus 6 times 0 minus 7 over 0 plus 1. All the pieces with zeros turn into zeros. So I'm just left with minus 7 over 1, and that's minus 7. In for my y-intercept, I'm going to write that as a point. Always the opposite letter is 0. The opposite letter of y is x, so the x is going to be 0, and the y is going to be negative 7. I'm going to plot the best I can, the point 0, negative 7, and then I'm just going to steal from my calculator the graph the best I can. So this is about, I guess that's like negative 7 and a half there, so I'm just going to call this the point 0, negative 7, which is the y-intercept. So I told myself a couple of things. I told myself what the window needed to be, which that's nice. But I haven't entered anything yet. In for y1, I need to write something that represents the function. I need to put the entire numerator and the entire denominator in a parentheses. So into y1, I'm going to en enter the function. 
I'm going to get my vertical asymptote in Y2. And of course, my calculator can't graph vertical lines. So we did the trick of taking 1,000 times the factor that gives a vertical asymptote. And this will simulate the vertical asymptote of x equal to negative 1. So I just took 1,000 times the denominator. And then for y3, I'll put my slant asymptote of x plus 5. I'm going to graph all of those using the window negative 10 to 10 and negative 25 to 25. And just slide it the best I can on my graph here. So I have everything I'm about to want to enter. So y equals and then parentheses x squared plus 6x minus 7 divided by parentheses x plus 1. For y2, 1,000 times x plus 1 to give me that simulated vertical asymptote. For y3, x plus 5. And then my window I told myself to use for this, hopefully it's decent, negative 10 to 10 on the x's and negative 25 to 25 on the y's. When I hit graph, I'm just going to, I entered something wrong. Oh, something that I entered totally wrong. Oh, wow. I don't know what happened on that denominator, that this here, but let me fix this up. Um, this should be x squared plus 6x minus 7 divided by parentheses x plus 1 into my y1. Don't know what happened, but you probably saw what happened better than me. Have my window OK. Hit my graph button. And now I'm going to copy the best I can these, this graph onto my picture here. And real specifically, I'm going to make my graph go through the intercepts and follow the asymptotes. So this right-hand side, it has to the graph has to get close to the vertical asymptote pass through the y-intercept, pass through the x-intercept, and then get close to the slant asymptote. Looks something like that. That kind of mimics my calculator. And then on the other side, my graph has to pass through the x-intercept, get close to the slant asymptote, has a little bend, and then it gets close to the vertical asymptote. This feels like a reasonable representation of the graph. It has all the different parts marked. It has the asymptotes drawn in. It has the intercepts drawn in. And I threw some arrows at the end of my graph just to make it, oh, maybe feel more complete to me. So you need to do number 9. And then I think, instead of me doing number 12, I'll do number 11. So pause the video and try to get number 9 done. Check your answer the best you can. And then instead of me doing problem 12, I'll do number 11 with you. So if you want, you can pause the video and do number 11 as well. Otherwise, just do it along with me if you're not ready to do this yet. So for problem 11, which I'm not going to do number 12, to find the domain, I set the denominator equal to 0. I isolate the x. That gives me x equal to 2. I'm going to say the domain is all numbers are all real numbers except x equal to 2. There are certainly other ways to write the domain. You can use interval notation or shorthand. And you can say except with or without the x. That would be a completely fine um, answer for the domain for this. The vertical asymptote is what comes up when I do the computation. So the vertical asymptote is going to be x equal to 2. I'll try to get some work, all, a bunch of work done, and then I'll graph it all at once. For this one, it also has a slant asymptote. The reason I get a slant asymptote is because the highest exponent in the numerator is 2. The highest exponent that's implied in the denominator is 1. And when the bigger exponent the biggest exponent of the problem is only in the numerator. You get a slant asymptote. I'm going to do synthetic division to find the equation of the slant asymptote. I'm going to change the sign of the negative 2 in the denominator to a positive 2. Didn't leave myself so much room here. I'll deal with it. Take the coefficients of the numerator, one, the 1 that's implied, the 7 and the 10 that are written, and do the synthetic division. I'm going to bring down the 1. Then I'm going to multiply 2 times 1 and get 2. I'm going to add these because they have the same sign and get 9. I'm going to multiply the 2 and 9 and get 18. I'm going to add because they have the same sign. 
and then I'm going to start writing down the result of the synthetic division. The first term gets an x attached to it, one power lower than the highest power in the numerator, one power lower than two is one. After the x to the first power term is always the term, the constant term, so that nine's not going to get an x. I need a plus sign. The last term is my remainder. The slant asymptote always has the equation of y equal to the first two parts of the synthetic division and not the remainder. So it's going to be y equal to x plus 9. It's going to be worse to graph this slant asymptote than the last, but I'll deal with it. Now I'll go to find the x-intercept by setting the numerator equal to 0, setting x squared plus 7x plus 10 equal to 0. I'm going to factor it. There's not a number in front of the x squared, so I don't need any special kind of factoring. Signs are plus and pluses because there aren't any minuses. The last have to multiply to 10 and add to 7, and that will be 2 and 5. Once I have it factored, I set the factors equal to 0 to is and then isolate the x's. I'll be lazy here and save a space. For this one, I'd subtract 2 from both sides and get x equal to minus 2. For this one, I subtract 5 from both sides and get x equal to minus 5. So for my x-intercepts, answer, it's going to be minus 2, 0, and minus 5, 0. Always when you're finding intercepts, the opposite letter is 0, the opposite of x is y. For the y-intercepts, I just plug in zeros for all the x's in the original function, so I'm going to say f of 0 is 0 squared plus 7 times 0 plus 10 over 0 minus 2. The pieces with the zeros go away and I get 10 over minus 2, which is minus 5. When I go to write my answer for the y-intercept, the opposite letter x is going to be 0 and then the y is going to be the computation, which is negative 5. So, I'm going to pull out a sheet of graph paper now and try to fit my graph with this window and start to show the pieces I need to show. Let me plot the intercepts first because they're going to be a heck of a lot easier. I need my windows to get up to 40s and that's going to be kind of hard so I'm going to go by 10. So how about I go 10, 20, 30, 40, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, negative 40. So trying to get the x and y axis set up for a window that I think is going to work. Vertical asymptote is super easy. To graph x equal to 2, I'm just going to go through 2 on the x-axis, make a vertical line. doesn't matter what color I make it. But there's my vertical asymptote at x equal to 2. The next thing is the, the cruddy one to plot. The slant asymptote at y equal to x plus 9. Super hard to plot this because my y-axis isn't incremented by 1. It makes the slant asymptote so much harder to plot. Um, my y-axis is incremented by 10s, and it's going to help myself tremendously if I get the slant asymptote by plotting in points putting numbers in for x so that I get a 10, 20, 30, or 40 out, and there isn't a right or wrong way to graph this slant asymptote, but in problem 11, since I have time to think about this, if I plug in 1 for x, I'll get y equals 1 plus 9, which is y equal to 10. That'll be a super easy point to plot. Even though it's on an asymptote, I can still plot that point. So there's the point, whoops, that's not the point 110. Here's the point 110, it's not even on an asymptote. And then the next point I'm going to plot, ugh, I'd like to plug in 11, because if I plug in 11, I get 20. And I think I can mess, get that on my graph here. So I'm being clever, I'm picking numbers for x that the y's are easy to plot on my graph, and my y's are all multiples of 10. I should just, I don't know how well those look. But if I put 11 in for y, I get x, I get 20 out for y. So now I'm going to plot the point 11 and then 20. And then the best I can, I'm going to plot this. Negative. I'm trying to f do some math in my head. Negative 11. So this, I don't know how well this is going to look, but it goes through this point right here. So the best I can, I'm plotting this 
slant asymptote, and it's not a thing of beauty for certain, but here's my slant asymptote, the best I could at y equal to x plus 9. Certainly not the best slant asymptote, but it goes through these two points. And again, I did some, some trickery here that I was clever because of the way I incremented my y-axis. I'm going to get the x-intercepts of negative 2 and negative 5 to be shown. So I'm going to draw a negative 2 on my x-axis, which is the point negative 2, 0, and negative 5 on my x-axis, which is the point negative 5, 0. When I go to graph this, it's really going to be kind of unfortunate because the graph is going to pass through the x-intercept, get a little bit higher, and come back down and pass through the x-intercept again somehow. And it's going to be hard to see this part of the graph because this part of the graph is happening the changes in this part of the graph are happening so close to the x-axis that when I have my y's going out to 40 that I might not see them so well but for what it's worth I've got those plotted last point I need to plot is the point 0 negative 5 and I'll call that 0 negative 5 I have everything on my graph other than the graph itself and now into y1 I'm gonna put the function itself and the function in the numerator has x squared plus 7x plus 10. In the denominator, it has x minus 2. I'm going to put both the numerator and the denominator in a parentheses. I'm going to get the vertical asymptote, which I can simulate by taking 1,000 times the denominator into y2. And I'm going to get my slant asymptote in y3. So I'm going to enter those three equations are and get my windows from negative 10 to 10 and negative 40 to 40 and hopefully when I do that I get something that shows up nicely so let me get my window fixed negative 10 to 10 negative 40 to 40 y equals clear this one out put in parentheses x squared plus 7 x plus 10 divided by parentheses x minus 2 close out my parentheses do 1,000 times x minus 2 to simulate the vertical asymptote at 2, and y equals x plus 9 to simulate the vertical asymptote. I'm going to hit graph, and I know this part's going to be so hard to see. It's got to pass through three points, and those three points are really close to the x-axis as opposed to the graph shooting out to 40. But I'm going to do my best to simulate what I think is happening. Ugh. So this portion right here is, seems easy enough. The graph is just tracking the asymptotes kind of like that. doesn't get as close to this asymptote. I probably needed the window to be bigger to get it close to the asymptote. The left-hand part of this, um, the graph passes through the y-intercept at 0, negative 5, and then it goes up to this x-intercept at negative 2, 0. And because it had odd multiplicity, it passes through the x-axis and then it just barely gets above the x-axis it comes back down and goes through the next x-intercept and then it starts tracking this line a little bit my graph is not really that beautiful I should probably try to make it look more like that than that but it's close enough um, so something that kind of represents this seems reasonable um, this is not definitely a work of art, but it's going to be good enough, and we can move on to the rest of the section. These next problems are definitely test-worthy. So for 14, to find the domain, I'm going to set the denominator equal to 0. So for 14a, I set the denominator equal to 0. I get x equal to negative 5. I'm going to say the domain is all real numbers. except negative 5. My vertical asymptote is going to be x equal to negative 5. Let me get that graphed by doing 1,000 and y2, doing 1,000 times x plus 5. Set my window to be on the 20s on the x's, on the 10s on the y's. Yours has to go from the 10, 15s on the x's and the 10s on the y's when you graph yours. So for my problem 14, I'm going to clear out all the crud that's in here. I'm going to enter 1,000 times x plus 5 for my vertical asymptote at negative 5. 
I'm going to make my window negative 20 to 20 on the x's and negative 10 to 10 on the y's just because I did that work ahead of time to know what the window should be. Now I'm going to graph this vertical asymptote at x equal to negative 5 on my graph as well. So my vertical asymptote goes through x equal negative 5. For part C, to do the horizontal or vertical asymptote, the highest x power ter exponent term in the numerator is a 2x to the first. The highest exponent term in the denominator is a 1x to the first. When there's a tie, you just find a horizontal asymptote. There's a horizontal asymptote, and you get it by dividing the coefficients. That's the middle of my three cases. If there's a tie between the exponents, you divide the coefficients, and that's going to give me y equal to 2 for my horizontal asymptote, which I'm going to graph on my calculator here in a second. So my horizontal asymptote is y equal to 2. Let me graph that, put that in my y3, and graph it. For the x-intercepts in part d, the easiest thing to do is just to set the numerator equal to 0. So I'm going to go 2x minus 10 equal to 0, add 10 to both sides and get 2x equal to 10, divide both sides by 2 and get x equal to 10 over 2, which is x equal to 5. That's the x part of the x-intercept. The opposite letter is always 0, so the y is 0. I'm going to mark that point on my graph. Lastly, I'm going to find the y-intercepts by plugging in 0 for x. So when I go to do 14e, I'm going to do f of 0 equals 2 times 0 minus 10 over 0 plus 5. That's going to simplify to minus 10 over 5 because the 0 pieces go away, and minus 10 over 5 is negative 2. So my y-intercept is going to be the point 0, negative 2. And now I'm going to graph this, borrow my, my calculator's graph, so on my calculator now, I'm going to enter the function in y1, 2x minus 10 divided by x plus 5, and make sure I make my graph go through the intercepts and look like it should good should look. So in the upper right left-hand corner, it looks something like that. In the bottom left, it goes through the x and the y-intercept, and it gets drawn to the asymptote. So it looks something like that. Again, I'm just borrowing my calculator's work, and I'm not trying to improve upon my calculator at all. Make sure my graph goes through the intercepts and just goes closer to the asymptotes, as close to the asymptotes as it should. So give 13 a go. We just have two more problems to do each, and they're so easy they're hard. Sometimes I put these on the test because I think they're easy. For 16a, to find the domain, I set the denominator equal to 0, and I get x equal to 0. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, except x equal to 0, which means there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equal to 0, and x equals 0 is the y-axis. So I don't have to draw that on my calculator, it'll already be done. For 16c, I probably should think of this as 3x to the 0 over x to the first power. And that will make the highest exponent be in the denominator. When the highest exponent is in the denominator, the x-axis, or y equal to 0, is the horizontal asymptote, and there's no work to do. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equal to 0, and there's no work to do for that either. And there's nothing to draw on my calculator, because my calculator already draws that axis. For the x-intercept in part d, I set the numerator equal to 0. Because there's no x, and that's a false statement, there's no x-intercept. For part e, I plug in 0 for x. I get a fraction with a 0 in the denominator, which is undefined. And when you get undefined when you're trying to find an intercept, there's none of those either. So there's not a lot to put on this graph. I have the asymptotes on, but they're already the axes, and there aren't any intercepts. So now I'm going to set my window to negative 8 to 8 and negative 5 to 5 and copy my calculator's graph. So clear out all the stuff that's in there. I'm entering the function 3 divided by x. I don't need parentheses because those are all monomials. And I'm going to go negative 8 to 8 for the x's, negative 5 to 5 for the y's, hit my graph button, and copy and copy the best I can. So I have a bottom left that looks something like that, 
and an upper right that looks something like this. And I'm not looking for perfection here, just something that vaguely represents the graph that looks similar to your calculator's graph is good enough. As long as it goes towards the asymptotes that you've drawn in, and if there's any intercepts, if it goes through the intercepts. So you can do 15, and now let me do your 17 just to get this done. So last problem, 17 and 18, I'll do 17 to help you out. So 17a, to find the domain, I set the denominator equal to 0. That's setting x squared equal to 0. That's really setting x times x equal to 0. I can take each of the x's and set them equal to 0, and I still get x equal to 0 for problem 17a. So the domain is going to be all real numbers, except x equal to 0. The vertical asymptote is going to be at x equals 0, which is actually the y-axis. So my vertical asymptote at x equals 0 is the y-axis. For the horizontal asymptote, the highest exponent in the numerator is x to the first. The highest exponent in the denominator is x squared. When the exponent in the denominator is bigger than the highest exponent in the numerator, the horizontal asymptote is y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. That's the top of my three cases, and there's no work to do for that either. So here I get a horizontal asymptote at y equal to 0. For part d, to find the x-intercept, I just take the numerator and set it equal to 0. This is going to give me x equal to negative 5. My x-intercept is going to be the point negative 5, 0, which happens to be right on a horizontal asymptote. My graph's allowed to cross a horizontal asymptote kind of close to the origin. And for part f, I'm going to put 0 in for the x's to find, for part e, to find the y-intercept, I'm going to put 0 in for the x's. I'm going to get f of 0 is 0 plus 5 over 0 squared. That's going to be 5 over 0, which is undefined. And when you get undefined, you don't have that particular x-intercept. Not a lot to graph here. The x and the y-axis are already drawn. And I'm just going to graph this function with the window. So I need to set my window from negative 10 to 10 on the x's, negative 10 to 10 on the x's, and negative 3 to 3 on the y's, because that's what I suggested. I'm going to enter the function uh, x plus 5 divided by x squared. I put the x plus 5 in a parenthesis because it's a binomial. The x squared doesn't really need to go in a parenthesis. Hit my graph button, and the upper right-hand corner is easy to draw. The upper right-hand corner just looks something like that. The left is a little bit harder. What happens with the left at the x-intercept is because the x-intercept had odd multiplicity, the graph was going to cross the x-axis there. And then it's going to get drawn back to the vertical asymptote. So it doesn't cross, it doesn't bounce off the x-axis, it crosses it because the factor that made it had odd multiplicity. So my calculator kind of is doing that. You can barely see it. The graph crosses at negative 5, 0, and then it stays so close to the x-axis that you really can't see it the rest of the way. All right, so that's got to be a good stopping point. So let's end this. We just have one more section of new material, and then we get the Chapter 5 test.